Hey guys, welcome to another week of Badass Wednesdays, where today we're going to be talking about Desmond Doss. You may know him from Hacksaw Ridge. He did some pretty cool things back in World War II, whether that be from Battle of Guam, or Okinawa, or even Hacksaw Ridge like the movie. So, stay tuned if you'd like to learn more about him. So Desmond Doss was born in Lynchburg, Virginia in 1919. He was also a pacifist or a Seventh-day Adventist. He didn't like to cause any harm to people. So in the movie, he also didn't bear arms. This is very true. He joined the U.S. Army and he ended up saying that, hey, I don't want to carry any arms. So that did cause problems to him, which he later was able to continue on with his religious beliefs. He didn't really get a whole lot of respect from his men because the people in his company and platoon believed that he was just going to cause them harm and possibly kill them in battle. One person actually straight up told Doss that he would kill him in battle himself. Doss ended up going on a rock march with some of the men from the platoon and the company and during the whole thing they thought where he didn't have to carry a weapon that he was going to have it easier than them. But they didn't realize that those canvas bags that Doss was carrying weighed more than the weapons that they were carrying. By the end of this ruck, they were all beaten up, their feet were all torn up, blistered, and Doss took the time to go through every single person and mandate that he saw their feet. And he would give them aid to their feet while he knew they didn't like them. But this gave them the respect that he deserved. In late April of 1945, Doss and his company were called on to go to Okinawa, Japan. So Doss's battalion, they were told that they had to go climb a cliff with cargo nets as their way up. This cliff was nicknamed Hacksaw Ridge. And when they got up to the top of Hacksaw Ridge, little did they know that there was a whole entire Japanese fleet waiting for them to climb up. They instantly started firing on them. So some of you may know this, some of you may not know. Against the Geneva Convention, you're not able to shoot a medic. If you see visually that, hey, this person is a medic and they have the cross, you're not able to shoot them. The Japanese didn't really give a shit about this, so they would actually still shoot at them. It was actually more of a target for them to shoot the medics than it was anyone else. The U.S. changed their minds and told them actually for the medics to not even wear this cross because it was more of a target for them if they were wearing it. About a week into the fight, Doss was the only medic on Hacksaw Ridge. Even though it was his Sabbath day, so it was a Saturday, mind you, Doss still decided to go up the ridge. And the Japanese ended up concentrating their heavy fire and artillery fire on his men. With mortar shells flying through the air and bullets flying and hitting people, a lot of people died. And Doss, he still continued to help these guys and help his men throughout this journey. Nightfall had reached and he ended up rescuing 75 of these soldiers including many of the men that ended up beating the shit out of him, basically, in his early military career. He didn't hold a grudge. Although this all happened, his actions, they didn't end here. Days later, the Americans would continue their assault on Hacksaw Ridge. And Doss was seriously wounded because he saw a grenade. And Doss actually ended up going to kick the fucking grenade out of the way so the people around him wouldn't die. Uh, shrapnel still obviously wounded him and the men with him. But instead of calling for another medic for help, he was still helping the wounded after getting blown the fuck up. And he ended up waiting five hours until he was actually even rescued himself. And while he was being back, 
he got shot, completely shattering the bone in his arm. The guy that was helping him, he used his bus stock and made a splint for his arm. After he got a surgery on his arm, after being shattered, he was actually brought straight to Washington DC where he was given the Medal of Honor from President Harry Truman himself. Captain Jack Glover, these are the words that he stated. He was one of the bravest persons alive, and then to have him end up saving my life was the irony of the whole thing. So Dawes didn't die until 2006 at the ripe old age of 87. And he had plenty of interviews, and you can actually listen to one of these interviews yourself, and I will be posting it in the description below. I would just like to say thank you guys for watching this video. And also, one more thing, just remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Now, thank you guys, and I'll see you guys next week.